All right, well, let's begin looking at some of the bones of the, of the pectoral girdle. And the pectoral girdle consists of the clavicle, the scapula, and of course they're holding the humerus in place. Um, let's begin with the clavicle. Now, this is the acromial end of the clavicle. It's a nice flat end. And then this boxy end here is the sternal end. You can appreciate how the clavicle is this nice S-shaped bone. It's like a lazy S, like somebody stretched this out, huh? Lazy S bone. Okay. Now let's take a look at this kind of weird looking bone. This is the uh, scapula. And we'll start with a couple of processes on the scapula. This one that looks a little bit like the crow's head is the coracoid process. This one, which is the short point of your shoulder, is the acromion process. And then coming down here is the spine of the scapula. So the spine of the scapula essentially joins up to form the acromion process. You can also appreciate here in the front, this little socket that holds the humerus is called the glenoid fossa. Um, there are some points on the scapula we should pay attention to. This is the superior angle and this is the inferior angle. The superior angle is going to be the point of insertion for the levator scapulae muscle. The inferior angle will be, uh, we'll be looking at things like the teres muscles for this one. We'll be talking about that later. All right, there are fossa associated with the, muscle, the uh, scapula. And this one here is the infraspinous fossa that is below the spine, infraspinous. This one above the spine is the supraspinous fossa. And then if we take a look here in the anterior portion of the scapula where the spine is absent, this is the subscapular fossa. All right. Now these fossa are regions of origin for three rotator cuff muscles. This would be the subscapularis, this would be the supraspinatus, and this would be the infraspinatus. We also have a couple borders on the scapula we should pay attention to. This is the vertebral or medial border, and this is the lateral border here. Okay, so those are some general regions of the scapula. Now there are two more things I should point out to you. There's a little bump right here, and there's a little bump down here. This is the superior glenoid tubercle, and this is the inferior glenoid tubercle. The superior glenoid tubercle is the point of origin for the long head of the biceps brachii muscle. The inferior glenoid tubercle is the point of origin for uh, the long head of the triceps brachii muscle. Okay, good. Let's take a look at just a few parts of this humerus. Now, this is the head. Right below the head is the neck. And then um, we have a couple of bumps on this humerus. This is the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle. These tubercles are going to be po important points of attachment for some of the rotator cuff muscles. We'll talk about that later. And then right here is the, in, is the inter tubercular groove. This groove is a good point of uh, insertion for uh, the teres major muscle as well as the latissimus dorsi muscle. It's also the region where the tendon of the biceps brachii muscle travels. So the long head of the biceps brachii muscle comes through here.